going to be part, not necessarily just of, of the kit build, but for laying out a headstock to drill tuner holes and how to glue on a headstock veneer. Well, there's a couple of ways to do it and we all have our preferential ways. I'm going to show you how you can do it without having any special jigs or fixtures. So the first thing you need to do is apply a little bit of tape. All right. Now, by having the tape applied, now we can mark points that we need to. First off, we need a center line. And the center line on a typical Martin, this is a typical Martin uh, headstock, is 2 and 7 eighths. So 2 and 7 eighths is half of that, is 1 and something or other. So, since we know 1 and 7 16ths, probably 1 and 15 30 seconds. So I'm going to mark. Here we go. So I have a mark there. Just a little. Then I can come up here, and I know that's 1 and 3 quarter, that's going to be 7 eighths. And that's that center line. and I can draw that line. So now we know the center of the headstock. Alrighty, so we're going to set this up. If you do a lot of guitars you'll probably make a jig. If you bought a kit you need to learn how to do one at a time. Now what I'm going to do, this is actually going to be a two-step process because we're going to assume you don't have your headstock veneer on. A lot of times they will come with them already on, but maybe you decided that you want to do an inlay. So I'm going to show you how you'll be able to take a, an inlaid headstock and get it on here centered where it belongs, and you'll actually be able to use some of the holes as a pinning so this doesn't wobble during the gluing process. Now, for C.F. Martin style necks, this is what you're going to do. So, uh, usually this information will come with a kit. If you didn't get it, you are welcome to email me, and I will see that you do get it. Now, off of the center line, as you can see, we're going to come down an inch and a half, one and five eighths, one and five eighths. So, one and five eighths is... 1.625. So I got to go to 150 first. And I can just come across here and with a dial caliper I can make a very clean, precise mark. Now when you figure that the next holes down here are going to be an inch and a half apart, the object is to know what the taper is coming in. Now I'm going to be using, for this guitar, I'm going to be using Waverly's. So I know what my offset's going to be, and I'm looking to see if I have my Waverly's here. I'm going to go get the Waverly's, and I'm going to show you how you'll be able to decipher that. But this is basically your key points. Inch and a half down, one and five-eighths, one and five-eighths. You're going to have a stagger, but in reality with the Martin, this one and this one are going to be Okay, how does that work now? I'm sorry. This one and this one is about the same distance from the side of the next stop, the, ne uh, the head plate. The bottom one is going to be canted just a little bit. When you look at them this way, you're going to see that these two tuners are almost going to, they're, they're going to be parallel to each other. Then the back one's going to cant off. So these two are going to follow pretty much the edge of the front of the headstock. The other one's going to cant out a little bit so that none of the posts will touch the adjoining strings. So, let me go get a set of tuners and I'll be right back. Okay, the object is you want your tuner, when it goes on there, you need a certain amount of reveal. At the same token, you don't want your tuner that it's, you know, where it doesn't belong. You want to see a nice reveal of your tuner 
And right about there is what I like. That's my personal favorite. And by doing that, what I'm looking at is from the center of the post, and you'll see there's a little step here, and I want that to be inside a little bit. And normally I'm going to use about a half of an inch as my guide to go along the edge here. So with that, I'm going to mark in one half of an inch. Now you can go get yourself a nice little compass and do it. I'm going to do it this way. Because this is something that you need to learn how to do. And you need to make them so that they're repeatable. Now again, half inch. Half inch. Now, I told you I'm going to come down here. This first line right here is an inch and a half. Now I'm going to go one and five eighths, and that's 1.625. And I'm, a lot of people like the digital ones. I, I'm an old school tool and die guy. I prefer the old mechanical ones. And I can actually use that to make the holes, make the little mark. Now, the offset from this guy down here is now inch and a half. So this guy should be an inch and a half apart. Okay, and this guy's going to scoot out a little bit. Inch and five eighths, go back to inch and five eighths. Because I gotta make a mark down here. Good. Inch and five eighths. Now, gonna go draw a line here. And I'm gonna draw a line across here. Now when you look at the center line positions, the top one here is 1 and 11 sixteenths across. So, what's the fractional or the decimal of 1 and 11 sixteenths? Well, if you take 11, divide it by 16, you come up with 6, 8, 7, 5. To that, we're going to add 1. So, 1 and 11 sixteenths is... 1, 6, 8, 7, 5. Divide by 2 is 8, 4, 3, 7. So we go to 8, 4, 3, and I'm going to do 44. That's close enough. So from my center line, I can make a mark. All right. The next one is easy because now we go inch and a half inch and a half is three quarter. So now I'm just going to go down to three to seven five oh and off of the center line on that line that we drew I can make another hole. And I do that, that's the same down here. Alright? So, with that being said I'm going to mark those holes so that I know exactly which ones they are. And that one was one point. That's that one. And that's that one. Now, I'm not going to drill the exact size hole yet. I can take a look at this and I can see that those two holes are parallel to my center line. This one offsets some. 
I can also take a look and see what my outside dimension is to that hole. Here I am at 420. Here I'm at 440. So I'm within 10. Here I am 540. 540. Upper one's 540. And 540. So these two holes are the same off of the edge of my heel stop. My heel, my head, my head stop. Now I'm going to drill six holes. These are pilot holes. So then, okay, now we go to the drill press. Now you want to use a drill press because it's pretty straight square. Doing these by hand are very, very difficult. I'm using a fresh bit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to drill all six holes. I want you to notice that when I drilled the hole, I just didn't go whoom. I went in, touched it, made sure I was on the mark I wanted to be. Then I went down, let the chips clear, go down. If you try to go all the way through, you can get your hole uh, a little bit off parallel. So, now that you know that... here was a 1 8 inch drill bit. Okay? That is what I wanted to use. I'm going to be able to, and because I have a smaller drill bit than the size I actually need, I can now measure this, and I'm looking for that 3 quarter inch, and I'm going to be able to make adjustments if I need to. Okay? That doesn't look too bad. And what I'm checking is I'm checking from here to here, and we're pretty good all the way through. Now, without changing that bit, I can now take my tape off. The tape is no longer relevant. And you can see my little holes. Alright, now, the next thing is going to be the headstock in here. Now the headstock veneer also has a center line as we well know. I'm going to take a straight edge and I'm just going to mark both ends of the, the head plate. Two little marks, I don't need big ones. Okay. Now you're going to say, why don't you just glue this on? Well, the problem with just gluing it on is that glue, when wet, is lubricant and it will slip all over. Now i got to trim this a little bit for my nut. And I'm going to trim that now rather than later. And I'm going to do that in my magic sand. Now I can take a look at this. Bad. I like that. I like that. Now, 
I don't have to worry about clamping this very hard. I don't need a lot of holes. Here's what I want. That tape's going to hold that there just fine. And that tape is actually going to hold that there just fine. You can see that's actually pretty, pretty stout. All I got to do now is put two holes in here. Now, it's kind of obvious what we do next. Now we will actually glue this on. And now I can take two small pieces of something, shove it in that hole, and that's going to keep my headstock from wobbling all over the place. So what are you going to use? You can use almost anything. One of my favorite little things is usually good old-fashioned toothpaste. Now you're going to say, but that toothpick isn't an eighth of an inch. And you're right. But it's close enough to get us where we need to be. So, how am I going to glue that on there? Well, you can use almost any kind of wood glue you want. I usually use whatever is closest to my hand. I want a nice thin coating of glue on here. I want enough glue so I can see the headstock, but not so heavy that I can't see the wood underneath the headstock. And then I'm just going to put, you can see I have a nice thin coat. You don't need a lot of glue. And that will give me something to pick later tonight. Now put that on here. And what clamp am I going to use? Uh, my favorite clamps for this are usually just good old fashioned spring clamps. Okay, I'm going to take two of these in here. One from one side, one from the other. Nothing, it's not too, too complicated. One from one side, one from the other. That kind of like gets it wedged in there. And that's not looking too bad. One came out. There we go. Good, that broke off. Now, that way, that's not going to scoot around. A little bit, but not enough to make it too bad. Okay, spring clamps. I have a number of kind of spring clamps. I can also use a good old-fashioned heavy C clamp. Uh, it doesn't matter what you use. The object is to get it clamped. You can actually do it like this if you want to. You can use a workbench. And with them being pinned, they aren't going anywhere. Now with tight bond, you can clamp that and in 10 minutes you can pull it out and take a look at it. And if everything suits you, continue. If not, it'll come apart pretty quick. That's how I glue a headstock on. This is all you need to do. We'll show you how to drill the headstock tuners next. Stay tuned. Enjoy Blues Creek Guitars. Thanks again for watching us and check us out at bluescreekguitars.com and Kick Guitar 4. Alright, you saw us glue this headstock on a little while ago. So now I am actually going to drill the headstock and I'm going to be using Waverly tuners. Now, how would you drill this? Well, I'm going to use my drill press. I don't recommend to even try to do this freehand, but if you have to, make sure you rig up some stops so that you don't 
cut something deeper than you need to. So you're going to say, well, all I got is a Black & Decker drill. Well, okay. That's not a problem. Let me show you how to make a stop for a drill. I'm not going to use it, but I'm going to show you how to make one. So you have a drill. And let's say that for the sake of the argument, you're going to put in this size hole. But you don't want to go too far. So you want to make a stop. Let me show you how to make a stop. Here we go. Now you can cut this off right here. The wood, not your finger. Now let's say you want to make a quarter inch hole. We know we got a little bit out there. Allowing a little bit for the end cut. Now you can very precisely and you'll be able to drill a very precisely stepped hole. That is the easiest way you're going to be able to do it without having a drill press. So why would you need to drill a stepped hole? Well, actually, there's two reasons. Number one, when you look at your, especially Waverly's, but all of your drill, or all of your tuners are going to have different thickness ferrules, bodies, so you have to match the holes you're drilling to that particular tuner. Now, in the case of a Waverly, we know that the post is a quarter inch tuner. That's a quarter inch hole. And you can measure it. 250 thousandths, I'm showing 242, so they're giving you just a little bit of playroom. Then we have the ferrule, which is right here. So when you measure a ferrule, remember these are supposed to be a press fit. So here we have, at the widest point, we have 342 thousandths. 342 thousandths, if you do the math, is something or other. I cheat and I use a drill index and I can take my ferrule and I can drop it into these things until I find it where it is where I want it to be. In this case 1164 is almost too tight 1130 seconds is almost too loose but it's it's pretty good. I'm going to drill an 1130 second hole just to see what it's like. Now, why am I putting the 1132nd in now? Well, I know I have 8 inch holes already drilled. What I'm checking for right now is just tightness for my ferrule. That's, that's all that I'm checking for. So, I can just drill a hole. Now I can take my ferrule and I can put it in here and you can actually see I'm about an eighth of an inch high, maybe a little less. So I got a little bit of room there for what we'll call a frictional fit. So the only thing I got to do next is take this out, lay that right there, grab a quarter inch, 
put my quarter inch bit in here. Now I have a sacrificial board here for a reason. That way when I drill, I can drill through something without running the risk of tear out. See that? No tear out. Now I'm going to drill I'm going to drill the hole for the ferrule. Now when I drew the, drill, drill the hole for the ferrule, I'm going to do something a little different. I got to know how deep I got to make my hole. Because the ferrule, I want the ferrule to fit, but I want it to be able to go a little bit further than the actual hole. So you can see that that's going to set me up pretty good. So how do I know how deep that is? Through the magic of tape. So I can put this into my little hole I just drilled. And I can put this on here. And that little piece of tape will tell me how deep I can go. And that is basically what I need to do. Now I will drill it maybe a little bit more than that, but not much. Balut, and then I'm using this block so I can support my balut or headstock and keep everything square without having the balut interfere. trick I want to give you. If you don't have a drill press that's, and you're, you're doing this by hand, the other option is you drill your ferrule hole first. And even if you haven't drilled the ferrule hole first, if you just drill the ferrule first, then you can actually use the ferrule as a way to pilot the tuner part. So, what I can do now, is I can put my ferrule in there, and I can run right through it. That centers the hole, so that when you put your tuner in,
everything is squared up and nice and straight. Because if you don't, and you get these cattywampus too much, they will be binding, they'll bind you up. Now if your ferrule goes in and it's too loose, you can always build up the inside hole with a little bit of glue, uh, fingernail polish, you can use almost anything. What I like to do, as you can see, I'm just giving these a little bit of a, a clean up because this is going out to finish tomorrow. And I like to have these pretty nice. That way I know that they're all ready to go so I don't have to play around too much when this headstock is finished and worry about adding a, a scratch that they don't want to do. So, now you saw how you can drill your tuners and your headstock and be very, very precise. One more thing I want to mention to you. You can measure these very precisely now. And if one is off too much, you can kind of manipulate your headstock. So I'm going to take my dial caliper and I can measure right here and I'm reading 200, uh, about a quarter of an inch. And here I'm reading 320, so this is a little heavy. Here I'm reading 430 and here I'm reading 330. Here I'm reading 330, here I'm reading 430. So I'm going to take a little bit off of this side of the headstock. Just a little. set up. The next step is going to be getting ready to bind this crazy puppy. I also have to do a little bit of hand sanding here yet. Alright, what I'm doing now, I'm getting my headstock ready to inlay. I'm doing my final little bit of sand in here. I'll have a little bit more to do when I'm done. Right now, we're getting ready for doing the binding. Now, I got to put a radius on the, the headstock. So you can now see I got a headstock. You can see that it's pretty much ready to go. I have a headstock veneer here that got to get bound, and I'm just checking to make sure that I have enough to go. Now, how am I going to get this done? Well, okay, 
what I'm doing right now is I'm checking a setup so I can bind my headstock. So I've taken my inlay tool and I put a little fence to it and I'm just going to use a little tap and a little discreet tap in here and there. I've created a ledge. So now I can see how much my how high my ledge is, how wide it is, how deep it is. And while I'm close, I'm still a little bit too much yet. So I'm gonna make just a slight. I have this pretty tight. So I can just take my hammer, give it a little notch. Okay, it's alive, and I'm pretty happy with that setup. That's going to be just about right. So, this is where one mistake can ruin your day. So I'm going to put this on. <laughs> do another setup here so I can get into here. So now I can clamp this on. And we'll get this set up then we can finish this puppy down.
Now I can do the other side. And then I'll come back and I'm going to clean all of these edges up with a file. That way I know that we're good to go. that thing forever to shut down. Now the next thing we got to do is actually got to bend this binding. Now the binding has been cut. This end is not exactly what I'm going to call pristine so I'm just going to lightly sand it so I can get that edge nice and flat. Now, at this point, we're going to have to bend it. Now, bending this can be tricky because Ivory, the plastics can, they're pretty flexible. But when you're trying to bend that sharp of a curve, they can be a little bit uh, less than helpful. So I'm actually going to heat this a little bit. Acetone helps. Uh, and to be honest with you, the glue that we're going to be using, which is Duco, will also help soften this. So, I know I can work here, work around. I also need my trimming tool, which happens to be a nice, straight cut toenail clipper. Sounds funny, but it works. Okay, now let me get the big bumping stuff out of the way. Then I gotta get my sticky stuff in the way. I wanna get my eyeball so I can see very closely what I got. At this point, I would say all is go. So, a little bit of Duco cement. And if you ever read the instructions, it'll tell you all kinds of crazy stuff, and I found that it never works anyway. So, I'm going to put that right in here, grab a piece of tape, come across my headstock, and I'm going to squish that in. Now I'm going to take my paper towel, and I'm actually going to kind of start rubbing this into the, the line. This is not unlike binding a guitar.
Now, unfortunately, this is going to have to sit overnight. But, you can see how I'm working the binding into the ledge. And I'm kind of thinking down and in, down and in. Now, because i got to get this to bend, I'm going to rely on the chemical reaction of the acetone in the Duco cement to help make this work. But what I'm going to do, I'm pressing this against my workbench and I'm just flexing it. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing this, but just flexing it in. And you can watch it as the acetone gets this to move. It'll come across pretty nice. And now I'm going to have to hide this from you. But here we are. I can actually use my workbench to help bend it. So now, you can heat it, but I like, depending upon what you're doing, you just got to be careful and learn to let the material do the job. Now again, I'm working a good bit of the Duco right into the corner and then I'm just gonna agitate the Ivory a little bit because that Duco cement has an acetone base which is not unlike what the material is made of. So now I can put this against my bench, walk it around slow And voila. If you hear me cuss, I dropped my watch. Now, I really want to work this in slowly. You don't want to work too fast because you got to get that corner to come around. Now I can take my And I've just taken this and I've trimmed this in with my toenail clipper. Uh, I know some guys will say that that tight bond works pretty good for this. I've never had good luck with it. Uh, I'm not saying it won't work. I'm just saying it doesn't always seem to work for me. And now I'm just going to do the rest of this like this. Taping it in. In and down, down and in. And that is how I bind a headstock. Now the headstock veneer that I'm or the the binding material that I'm using is actually a little heavier than what I actually need. Because what's gonna happen the tape is actually going to soften this stuff up and kind of squish it into the corners really really good and tomorrow when I come back the little areas that are gapped will be crushed in and it'll all fill up but you can see how I'm against and here we're against and I'm going to let this Duco cement cure probably a good five, six hours. Then it can sand this down and off it goes. And that will be a headstock for my D45 conversion. And uh, that's how you do it.